Welcome to Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from Central California with your hosts Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting video worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and broadcasting audio on the Dark Matter Network at ArtBell.com. Are you ready to witness something that you cannot explain? everyone, welcome back to another episode of Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from Fresno, California, in an undisclosed location. Alan doesn't even know where he's at. Don't got a clue. <laughs> Thank you for showing up on a Sunday afternoon, wherever you may be. I really appreciate it. As you can see, I am not alone in here. I have a co-host who's been with me forever. His name is Alan Thomas. Yeah. Hello, everyone. They brought me in here in a van with a bag over my head. <laughs> I don't know how I got here. <laughs> and uh, manning the board in front of us, Emerald Bonilla. Hello. Hi, Emerald. Thank you for, again, you know, without you guys out there, we would not have a show. And we love what we do here. And we are going to continue doing it because we're having a blast. And every week is a new adventure for us because we learn stuff every week. And I got a feeling it's going to get just a lot crazier in our lives here pretty soon because a lot of things are happening. And I am excited, and Alan is excited, and uh, we're on a road, and I don't know when it's going to stop. And that's just as simple as that. So, all right, what we're going to do is like every week, we have um, two reporters that we found and hired, and they are going to inform us on the recent UFO sightings around the world and in the U.S. especially and in the Bigfoot also Sasquatch Avenue we have Keith uh, Ken Pfeiffer and Danny Valderrama. Ken is on the East Coast he is an investigator for MUFON and we're going to get him on the line right now and we're going to find out if there has been any killer sightings in the past week. Ken are you there buddy? Uh yay. Jeff, hey, how you how's it going Ken? Also, Hi, Ken. Okay. All right. All right, Ken. So what's been going on in the UFO world? Well, we've had a few things happening. Uh, not really, not too much uh, Not too much excitement. Right. Uh, I have a few photos for you, and uh, my contact at NASA, we'll call him Ooh. Vincent, uh, he got a couple uh, pretty neat shots to me, and I researched them, and I'm going to you know, show them to you tonight. Okay. Ooh, and uh, so what number would that be? Uh, that'd be number one. All right. Well, let me uh, get number one up here. And for all those who are listening at the artbell.com website right now, you can go to his website on the Dark Matter Network, and Art Bell has all the pictures that I'm going to show you on live stream right now. For those who are watching us at paranormalcentral.net, live stream avenue, I'm going to be posting the pictures as we go along, so that way you guys can go ahead and follow along with us. And again, again, if you're listening at Art Bell, you can go to artbell.com. And the pictures are up there. Just look for Paranormal Central links. Uh, and you'll see Paranormal Central and UFOs and Bigfoot. So, all right. We are right now going to go ahead and put up picture number one. And I'm doing that right now. And here we go. All right. Take us away. This is from your secret connection at NASA. I don't want to know his name because I want him to continue sending you these killer photos. What do we got here? Okay. Now, this, was, uh, this image was captured on October 4th. 2003 over the Atlantic Ocean. Um, this was mission ISS uh, 007, and the mission ID on the photo was 16252. So everyone is welcome to, you know, research them themselves, check this out. 
And quite frankly, uh, what the big secret is, uh, I've even found this out uh, researching my uh, Apollo 15 and a lot of the Apollo missions. If you download a photo to your system and you adjust the exposure and the brightness, you'd be surprised what pops up uh, in the sky. Really? And I, I think NASA knows this, and I think NASA has... Uh, published all of their their photos, and uh, I would say a, a large majority of them are adjusted in such a way that you can't see any UFOs in, in the sky. Ooh. So, so that's they... what I've done with this photo number one. I was able to uh, uh, adjust it, uh, the exposure and the brightness, and guess what popped up? See, like you do, you turn up the gain? Is that what it is? Yeah. And it's so, yeah. like, if we go in any pictures and turn up the gain... Yeah, you'd be surprised what you'd find. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying every picture, of course. Yeah, that's right. how they. That's how I, I feel. That's how I've been told they hide them. Okay, oh, man, I'm going to be doing that. Uh oh, okay. Now the <laughs> now when your connection at NASA sent you this photograph, he sent it to you because there was something in this picture he wanted you to see. Now, did you have to adjust it, or was it already did it already come adjusted for you? No, he told me what to do. I had to adjust uh, it. Oh, 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 oh. We're getting the inside here, guys. Are you guys catching all this tour out there right now? NASA <laughs> is pissed off right now. Okay, now, everybody that just tuned in, you heard <laughs> that. Go to the NASA pictures, download them on your computer, mess around with the gain oh. and the brightness, and bring them up. Yeah, you and mess around there. with it. Uh, you know, just get on air and start uh, uh, turning knobs, and, and you'd be surprised what, what pops up. Oh, wow, crap. man, that is Dude. so cool. All right, that's yeah, awesome. You, you can even go to Google Moon. You can get the uh, the early Apollo, all of the panoramic shots, and a lot of the very very high def photos from there. I believe it was the Hasselblad. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Camera they used, and like I said, I think they, uh, you know, they they put all everything on on the internet, and but they. They did a little bit of tweaking, so mm. you could not see everything. <laughs> that is really that's cool. That's, that's smart. That, really. that, 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 uh, oh boy. Okay. Awesome. All right. That blows me away. Yes, I know that. Absolutely. You know? So, okay. So, um, are we done with number one? Uh, yeah. Number one's done. Cool deal. All right. We're gonna go to number two. Hi, number one. All right. We yeah, are now number two. Uh, yeah, number two and three. Of course, number three. That's the uh, that's the uh, uh, enlargement. Uh, he said they chased this uh, thing over in Massachusetts, and that's all the information he gave me. But uh, he also gave me the, uh, you know, the information. This is mission ISS 036. Uh, 22099 is the mission ID on the film, and this was uh, location was over Massachusetts. Uh, they had the focal length was uh, 800 millimeter. The altitude was 222 nautical miles. Now that altitude, that would be uh, a the earth there's there's it's kind of really kind of hard to say how high up this this object was i'm, I'm probably i'm thinking myself possibly uh, 10 15 thousand feet so oh, okay so when you're uh, when you're saying so this this is the one of the photographs your buddy sent you from nasa now you when you're yeah. saying they were chasing it or they were monitoring it or who was uh no they well they they, they were able to monitor it and he said they they chased it over massachusetts and that's all he said now the okay. date on this was uh, September. Uh, I'm sorry, 7:20. That's July 20th, 2013. Time was 14:04. Uh, well, 2:04 p.m. Uh, you know, a mil you know, for our uh, civilians. Right. And like I said, the altitude was um, 222 nautical miles. The uh, they even gave it the camera ID it was N5 Nikon D3S. So uh, <laughs> that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty cool. I'm. I'm. I'm uh, I was able to find this, and uh, you could you could go back. Part. You could go back in the weather, and because it looks like it's above the clouds, so you could go back to that date and time, find out where the cloud deck was, and you might be able to even nail where you know where the altitude, like if it's twenty two thousand mm -hmm. feet or ten thousand feet, looks like it's just exactly. above the the cloud deck, right there. And well, when he, when and when you say that uh, they were tracking or chasing it then our military was after this sucker that's for sure i'm assuming that's what he meant by it yeah <laughs> yeah it looks like two objects there uh, yeah. one yeah. side by side sure and, does um yeah he didn't mention one or two but but you know to me it looks like uh uh it it, it, 
looks like they're they're probably uh, I would say maybe uh, three or four meters apart from each other, uh, but they're flying pretty close together. Yeah. Thank you, NASA. Yeah, like I said, it's ISS 036 uh, for all them uh, people who uh, want to. Um, you know, I'm not going to do the easy work for you. You right. know, you're going to have to do a little bit of research yourself. I'm not going to give it to you on a platter. Uh, you'll have to find it, but. Uh, they have a website where you can you can look at all these photos. There's there's probably I'm saying there's probably over a million photos, high def photos taken from space all over this world, all over the Earth here. And uh, all you got to do is is have the patience to sit down and and look at them, and you'd be surprised what you find. Not anymore. They're taking them down right now because you get, you gave the uh, the hint. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we know. Um, What's amazing is they decide they're going to, you know, like the military is going to chase one and then the ISS happens to fly over and then they zoom in and start following it with that too. Wow, that's cool. I mean, that's a coordinated effort that right. is really amazing. Exactly, yeah, because it seems that they take these photos um, uh, basically every second. Right, yeah. Yeah, because I, I looked at the photos prior to this and it seems like, uh, every second, every two seconds, sometimes every three seconds is when they they uh, either click off a, a photo or or they you know only publish what um, what they want to publish. You know, so there's right. some photos out there that that uh, they probably don't even want no, no. on that website for us to see. So yeah. uh, we were lucky enough to find this one. This is one they probably missed. Like the mothership, you know, the one that's like <laughs> the fifty ones. miles wide. They don't uh, want you to see that, right? <laughs> All right, let's go to number four. Let me adjust yeah, it here. Yeah, number four. That's a, that's a strange one here. Uh, no, oh, come a, on. I that you know what yeah, that looks like. To the left there is a bird. Of course, yeah. you can tell that. But this was um, April twenty six, two thousand fourteen. Uh, Moro dos Conventos, Brazil. I don't know. I guess that's how you pronounce it. I'm not Spanish, but um, yeah, short statement was uh, three girls were taking photos of the sea. Then the object appeared in the sky. The girl who was with the camera managed to capture the image, but you try another photo, the object was gone. And the birds in the sky that were previously also disappeared. Uh, but before the object appeared, the birds were agitated. The object appeared in the sky with, with, with a few seconds and then disappeared. Uh, birds that were nearby were also gone. One of the girls got very excited and scared, then she cried. So, um, yeah, I, I really don't know what to make out. Yeah, I, I mean, that photograph right there looks pretty dang close to uh, War of the Worlds, the first yes. first movie. You know, just, just the way, oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, this one's a little iffy. Um, I, I don't know about this one. But, hey, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, you never know. I don't know. I mean, it's a UFO to me. Yeah, so that's it. An unidentified object. flying object. It's huge, Very whatever it is. I thought I'd, I'd show that one to you. Yeah, right on. Okay, let's when, go to number When you look at the houses over there and, and you see how big that is, it's huge. Yeah, and it's a good size one. All right, we are number five, Ken. Okay, yeah, it's in, uh, this is uh, October 16, 2013, and down in California. I believe that's outside of Los Angeles, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, that's a really, really very strange uh, object that he caught in the upper atmosphere. Um, I had to enlarge it and enhance it a bit to uh, to bring it out a little bit. But uh, a brief statement is on uh, one night in October, I was sitting in my friend's driveway uh, smoking a cigarette, and I noticed Jupiter was super visible, so I decided to take some pictures with my with my phone. I just started snapping away and didn't notice anything unusual. I was only quite some suburban street with no unusual lights or anything out of the ordinary. After a minute, I got a weird feeling, and I went inside. The next morning, I went through my pictures and found these. Uh, please note that I did not move my phone while taking these pictures, and, and I saw nothing while taking these photos uh, that could explain them. I'm sorry for the uh, vague description, but I just really, I'm really hoping you guys will help me figure out uh, what these are. So uh, I, I Personally, I don't have a clue with what this, uh, what yeah, this thing could this, be in this. the sky. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Um, yeah, this one's the a light, and who knows from what direction and how high, and so I'm just going to say an unidentified. So right yeah, on. Yeah, that's, that was a pretty, pretty dramatic shot. I thought I'd share that one. Cool. Too, cool deal. All right. So anything else going on there, Ken? Uh, 
Um, no, not really. We're, we've been getting more uh, more UFO sightings. Uh, you know, um, getting a few pictures, and of course, I do have a, a, quite a few more from my uh, my contact at NASA that he sent to me already. That I'll show you next week. Awesome! Wow, Sweet. that's awesome, dude. All right, appreciate it, Ken, and thank you for uh, placing stuff on Paranormal Central's like page. Everybody is enjoying that. Keep on doing it. Don't stop. And we will talk to you next week. Okay. Okay, Jeff and Alan, uh, thanks, guys, for having me on, and I'll talk to you next Sunday. Sounds Have a good, good man. Win, Ken, man. Take care. See ya. Okay, pal. Okay, bye. Yeah, you know, as as the weather gets better and everybody's outside having a smoke and a barbecue, the sightings go up yep. every single time. Absolutely. You know, in the winter, everybody, they don't stay out there long. Nope. You know, and, yeah, and, well, and you're right, it's getting hot, too. Um, but nighttime, a lot of people are going to be outside later now by the pool and kicking it and looking up, and that, so we're going to get a lot more sighting. So, all right, right now, Emerald is getting a hold of Danny Valderrama if he's not in jail uh, from running another person over. So we're going to get him on the phone and hold on, and here he comes, Danny Valderrama. Hello there, fellas. Hey, Danny. What you doing? Uh, <laughs> Sunday already? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, Danny, that that we found out that the International Space Station takes pictures just as fast as you do. Whoa! You know, like one every two seconds or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna ask. Uh, we're gonna pretty much ask again. Uh, did you hit anybody this past week? Uh, nope, that wasn't me. Well, you know what? There was one in Central Fresno, but I guess it, you yep, weren't around. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. I was okay. home. You were home. The alibi, huh? I was too tired to go anywhere. <laughs> it was too hot. Too hot. All right. Danny is going to give us a Squatch report. He is up on all of the Bigfoot sightings and Bigfoot news around the world, not just the United States. And Danny sent over a bunch of pictures. We have them here. You can watch them also off the artbell.com website. And this is the Squatch report for today. All right. We're going to go to uh, Bigfoot number one photo. And I have it on the screen. Go for it. And this is not Bigfoot, but it's uh, Les Stroud, and oh. he does the uh, Survivor Man series, right. and also Survivor Man and Son, which is his uh, 17-year-old son, Logan. And it, he just announced that his son, Logan, has uh, leukemia. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, and it, that's why he said in some of the episodes, you can see that he's not keeping up with him. He's kind of tired and all that stuff, and they, so they took him to the doctor, and they found out that he has a leukemia AML, which is it starts in your bone marrow. And then spreads pretty quickly from there. That's not so cool. They, um, he's already gone through two rounds of chemo. Uh, his dad was at his bedside for the last month. He's in a Toronto sick sick kids hospital. And um, so his, no his survivor. Dad has already man. left his side because his dad is a musician. I didn't know that Les Stroud was a musician. Mm. He plays a blues harmonica. He's a singer songwriter, and he's on tour currently. So he's in Jacksonville, Florida. And also going to in, in Illinois and Minneapolis and all that stuff. L- Les Stroud yeah. is really? Yeah, I didn't know that. If you go to Les Stroud's uh, Facebook page, uh-huh. fan page, it has video clips of him playing in, with his band and doing like a just they're um, testing their gear out at the next uh, sites and okay. doing sound checks. There's all videos on there. Wow, Man, pretty when interesting. Next, when next time he does a Survivor Man Bigfoot, he should like play him a tune. Yeah, you know, get out there I think and I, he probably does play the, uh, the opening music to the uh, to the, the episode, Survivor Man episode. Right, right. I think that's him playing. Oh wow! But he's asking everybody just to send his uh, son well wishes and cards if you want to send Absolutely. cards. Absolutely, prayer to Toronto Sick Kids Hospital. I would say prayers are the best thing. Send good vibes that way, everybody. Yep. Yeah, really. That's a hard tough, one, right tough there. Tough battle. Yeah. There. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Next picture. Is Bigfoot number two next? Ah, uh-huh. this is my favorite one. If you have eighty-five thousand dollars <laughs> laying around, you can uh, go ahead and buy Clifford now, Labricks. Now, He's seventy-three years old, selling a, a model of a Bigfoot. Only eighty-five thousand, huh? It's on eBay. It is. I did check, and it actually is listed there. Last week, it was uh, eighty thousand, and the bidding closed with no bids. So he upped it to eighty-five thousand. <laughs> now, why would what he do guy. that? <laughs> now, now, why would you up it like that five grand and nobody? Well, I guess because of the excitement of Bigfoot right now. 
Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's why maybe he was smart enough to up at five. Maybe he, he heard around that somebody was thinking about buying it, so he, that's why he upped it to five grand. But well, he, he claims it's a fair price. He says that you can uh, buy it and then build a museum around it because it is museum quality. Yeah, I know it's a and, good. Uh, no, I, and, and I want to say something that I this has been on eBay for a couple of years now, mm-hmm. and yeah. I always said to myself, man, this would look good in a museum, a restaurant. Or even a set of a talk show. It is, it's seven feet six inches tall. Wow! And if this was, it's made of fiberglass. If it was real, it would weigh between six and a, a thousand, six hundred to a thousand pounds. Okay. The feet on it are uh, eighteen inches long, nine inches wide. The shoulders are four four feet across. So, like, is he's been researching for forty nine years. He says he had a sighting in nineteen seventy seven, where two of them were uh, behind his tr- pickup truck where he was parked and one was in a wood pile and the other one was coming towards him and he said that he was going to shoot the one coming towards him but he, he got buck fever as he calls it and couldn't shoot it so it grabbed him and started shaking him around and he passed out and when he woke up they were both gone holy really man yeah oh, man but, holy but he didn't I say that died. this was based on what he saw I but he just... says that when they do find that this is a real creature that the costume that this museum quality uh, piece that he has here will be accurate within two inches. Wow. Wow. It looks like the one I saw, except for it's not as black, but pretty much, you know, and it wasn't, the one I saw wasn't hunched forward like that. It was more standing straight up. But otherwise, huh. pretty close. Very cool. Well, well, he, he says he hates, uh, he hates finding Bigfoot mm-hmm. TV show. <laughs> Because <laughs> he he believes that damaging the credibility of all the Bigfoot hunters, yeah. mm-hmm. making it look like every sound in the forest is a Bigfoot. He, nope. He's already stopped researching. He's been researching for 49 years, but he says nobody wanted to listen to what he said, so he stopped researching. It'll, it won't make me stop. They can keep telling yeah. me I'm seeing bears all they want, but I'm <laughs> not going to stop. Yeah. As no. a comparison to this, uh, the 1985 uh, Harry and the Henderson's Bigfoot costume. Right. Today is worth three point nine million. What? Wait, wait, wait! What? The, the costume for Harry and the Hendersons. Three point nine. Worth three, it's worth three point nine million, and, but that's because it has a lot of uh, animatronics inside too. It uh, takes more than one person to make that costume move. Oh. Make the eyes move and the the eyebrows and all that stuff. So they are actually selling it. No, the, the just what the value is. It's oh, in oh, the, oh, 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 Studios. Okay. 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 It's just a comparison because he Got says it. the eighty-five thousand is a fair price for this one. Oh, I see. So he's comparing it to that. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe we can get uh, what's his uh, Bill Mums? Is that his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To, to make one because that's that's what he used to do. I mean, he a uh, well, swamp thing. We have, have one. We have one coming. We don't need one. Well, yeah. They, yeah. He said he was going to get us that's one, right. so we're still waiting for uh, Brian Sykes to uh, get us a costume. Yeah. Um, we can call Jim, Alan's brother. He just came into some money, so he can put a bid on it. <laughs> yeah, two thousand dollars, you get half of the foot for that much. <laughs> so right on. All right, man, that's a cool picture. I like that one. I've always uh, man. Can had... you imagine getting grabbed by one and shook around? <laughs> oh man, I can't get past that, that part. Oh, okay. All right, Bigfoot number three. And this is a mask belonging to a tribe. Uh, this happened on May fourteenth. Um, the Sasquets tribe, S A S Q apostrophe E T S, the Sasquets mask, commonly known as Sasquatch. It's been missing for 75 years from this tribe. And uh, James Leon has uh, been searching for it for 16 years because the elders have told him about it, so he took up the responsibility of looking for it. He's been to London, Boston, New York, Ottawa looking for this thing. And it wasn't until he went to an event in Vancouver, in the Vancouver Museum, where he was sitting next to a lady, and he just happened to ask her if she knew anything about a, a mask that was partially covered in bear fur, like an ape-like creature mask. She said, oh, yeah, we were looking at that yesterday. What? And so she went back to the back room and got it for him and showed it to him, and it's the mask that he's been searching 16 years for. He just happened to ask her, and she had it at the museum. So... It disappeared in 1939 from their First Nations tribe near Harrison Hot Springs in British Columbia. Uh, the guy named uh, J.W. Burns had taken it. He was a teacher at the, one of the local tribe schools, and he was obsessed with Bigfoot. He's often credited with bringing the word Sasquatch 
into the common uh, common use, but he donated it to the Vancouver Museum. Ah, oh. so what's going to happen so, now then? Well, the museum has a policy of returning sacred objects to the First oh. Nations tribes Very cool. to help them educate their youth and strengthen their ties between the cultures. So the mask was given back, and oh. it's... Uh, that is cool. Wow. They're, they're, they're going to take care of it this time. I wonder, wow. I wonder if it's Bigfoot fur or bear fur. It's yeah. bear fur. Uh, it says it's bear fur. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a mask carved from... It's the, the mask was carved based on stories from the beginning of time of their culture. Wow. It's always been a part of their culture. That, that's cool. what I've heard. I've learned the same thing. They were The Native Americans I know say that Bigfoot was there before they were there. That, that's why they call them the ancient ones. Mm-hmm. They've always been there. Mm-hmm. So this guy believes that if you, you see a Bigfoot, you receive a gift, like you become a good speaker or a, or a good hunter. And he says that he was out walking with his uh, wife at the time, and she they had seen one, but she, he didn't get a chance to see it because she pushed him aside, so he didn't get to see it, but he believes he just wasn't ready to receive his gift. That's why he wasn't able to see it. Wow. I thought you'd become a good runner. You know what I mean? <laughs> you see one, and man, you could run like crazy. Faster than you ever knew. You know, really. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> yeah. Wow, look, it's 10 feet tall. Gone. Yeah. All right. Probably Dad. why they got a divorce, because he, she pushed him out of the way. Oh. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> she stole his gift. <laughs> All right, number four. I know this picture. Oh, this is going to be good. Mr. Standing. Yeah, this is Todd Standing's picture. And um, this is from the North American Bigfooters Research and Bigfoot Sightings page on Facebook. Mm-hmm. E.W. Darkwing Lee, he wanted to show an example of how easy it was to make the creature blink like in the Todd Standing video. And he said he, it, it isn't perfect because he didn't take a lot of time doing it. Right. But he, but he says that um, there's a software out there called Crazy Talk, and it allows you to take a picture and make it actually speak, make the eyes move, and uh, the eyes move and close, and then have, you can do facial features with it. So that's what he did, and there's a short video, too. It's like 40 seconds long. I don't know if you're able to play it or not. Yeah, we are. You want to play it real quick? Yeah, go ahead and play okay, it. Okay, go ahead and this, play this that. This is what he came up with. Okay, we'll really go ahead. You know that Bigfoot right there is supposed to be five years old. That's what he said. Yeah. That is a five-year-old Bigfoot, supposedly. He looks about 90. You know. okay, hold. All right, hold on. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I got it on the screen. And here we go. This is going to be interesting. This video is interesting, really. Let's hope that it doesn't... Like... So basically, that's a picture then. And, picture. Um, and uh, this... You can manipulate it with the software the to make software it do whatever just... you want. Wow. Hmm. So it, it'll talk there in a minute. The lips will move. Yeah, but it doesn't have any sound to it, right? No, it doesn't have any sound, but you can see the lips moving. Right. Uh-huh. The eyes blinking. This one is not on artbell.com. This was just given to us about 15 minutes prior to going going on the uh, uh, on the yeah, air. Yeah. So, unfortunately, Artbell didn't get a chance to put that on. So, um, I wasn't sure if you could play it or not. So I yeah, it's, an actual, it's an actual it. video. Yeah. So, interesting. Now, let's talk about that. You know, just because you can mimic or you know um reproduce something doesn't mean that it's, it's fake. fake yeah yeah you know yeah. um it, it does, has nothing to do with it um you know because a lot of people did that with the windows of our truck you know somebody went mm-hmm. and got a polar bear and said it matched 100 percent to a polar bear but the only problem we don't have polar bears up in the mountains and uh you know make a long story short that you know it just that's what people do. They will try to debunk whatever they can. And the, nowadays we have CGI and Photoshop, and we can pretty much reproduce anything that's out there. So yep, just we're because for irrefutable evidence. Yeah. And so you don't try think. Try to recreate everything. Yeah. Now we were just talking prior, <clears throat> and there was a video on Facebook that Alan and I saw where it's. Uh, I think it's a trailer to his movie because I think this Todd Standing's movie is now going to be hitting this, the the film festivals, right? Yes. Yep. And I heard he signed a deal with uh, National Geographic or something like that, and he sold his documentary to them for like $2.8 million. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I read that we need to do too. something, man. We need to get busy. Oh, no way. In. Are you serious? $2.8 million? Yeah. Yep. That's peanuts, man. He should have wow. got 10. He should have got 10.8. 
Wow. There's a lot of people that still uh, don't believe Todd, but there are some now that are coming out and saying to leave leave Todd alone. You know, if you don't have any proof, leave him alone. You know, so that's I'm, what I see. Well, you know what? You know what? That's what I see. Yeah, the trailer that we saw has Todd standing and Jeff Meldrum is sitting down behind a desk and Todd Standing has something playing on his laptop computer and Jeff Meldrum is like just totally floored at what he's watching on the screen. And Alan, and I, I didn't have the volume up, but Alan said that, what did he say? What did Jeff Meldrum say? Um, he said it changed his whole paradigm of what he thought about Bigfoot. So yeah. whatever was on there was making him believe in Bigfoot more than ever. Okay. So, so so that means if the National Geographic is willing to pay two point whatever million dollars for whatever Todd Standing has, Todd Standing has something legit and it's gonna blow everybody out of the freaking water if they're gonna play pay two point five million or whatever it is. Simple you know, as this could all these people um, bagging on uh, Todd Standing, it could be a way a tactic that, to use to get him mad enough to say, "Okay, you know what? I do have it. Here it is, right here." To right. Get him to but, show it faster. But you know what? He was he was smart enough, and he held back, and now he's a rich man. Yeah. Now he's an absolute rich man. Um, he's you know only going to get richer from there. You know what? Yeah, I it's. You know, I've, I've still oh, got the windows. You know, I still got the windows of my truck, man. I think we need to sit down and find somebody who wants to. to uh, we need to write up that book. Well, I, I can't wait to see it because if they're going to show whatever, um, you know, the Jeff Meldrum was looking at, mm -hmm. and you know what? Changes that, whole that, paradigm. That, that I is, can't wait. Yeah, to and that's see that. and that's going to be on TV, and you know, the Discovery Channel, whoever National Geographic, whoever bought it, is going to promote the hell out of it. Oh yeah, oh, and it's yeah. going to be. The interviewable, you know, uh, evidence of a Bigfoot finally on national TV, and it's going to blow. It's going to like 15 million, 20, 20 million, 25, 30 million people are going to watch that that episode. I guarantee it. Probably more than that. Yeah, big. we're talking Maybe big time. You might even release the documentary in the movie theater instead. Oh, that that'll that'll make their money right there. Yeah, that'll be like you know what? Wow. It, what is uh? I was just watching. The latest one, Godzilla, mm -hmm. like the first night was like ninety-six million dollars. You know, I don't know if you'd want to do something like that in a movie theater though, because a lot of movies that are supposedly true or documentaries are not taken like that in a movie theater. Mm. Mm, but if National Geographic promotes it correctly, though, if they put it in IMAX, I'll watch it and believe it. You know, <laughs> uh, if they, if they promote it correctly, not like you know, um, well, no, like the me, Blair Witch Project or any of that type of you know movies. I I know what you're talking about, but um, <sighs> see, I mean, if you're Maybe gonna be out there yeah. saying, "Hey, this is real," I think you have to have it open to everybody, not just those who could afford a movie ticket. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Well, it's up to National Geographic. This is the chance. For, I mean, they can make. Over a hundred million dollars, so two point five million to them is absolutely nothing. You know they can at least, they can sell CD DVDs and make five million, ten million. So probably they're they're probably thinking way ahead. Uh, they probably also purchased the rights and uh, from the actual you know image. They probably purchased everything from him. So now they're going to be making shirts, you know everything, and they're going to be making the money. So you know, so basically he sold them the rights to everything. The probably the pictures, the videos gone and probably you know on the on the bottom end is probably going to receive a, a, a percentage i'm thinking right yeah yeah he'd be stupid to not, not not do, do that. that yeah so either that or he has a bad agent yeah <laughs> so all right I'm i starting got to the, learn uh, about them agent things i got the uh, the next photo up david uh danny is the right. uh, yeah and i'll call you david uh danny is the photo of a sketch yeah, it's, there, there should be three sketches. Okay, got the and first this one up. Was a, a daylight sighting, and this was near Ocean Shores, Washington. And Ocean Shores, Washington is, is near the uh, so southwest part of Washington State. And I've been there too, and everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you have. <laughs> we, this guy was driving home to Ocean Shores, heading south, and he saw a deer run across the road about a, an eighth of a mile ahead of him. So he slowed his, his car, expecting another deer to be chasing it, and instead he sees this massive creature chasing it and it crosses the road in three strides oh. so he stops his car and says what the heck and uh he didn't say that but, but <laughs> close to that and he, he sees the the creature stop at the roadside burn and it turns around to look at him and the creature gives him this kind of like a grin 
that he says it clearly was a threat. And so, and then it turned its head and vanished into the brush. And this guy's uh, window was down. He was about 20 feet away from it. He Ooh. said the face was human looking, no chin, heavy brow ridge, human nose, eyes are black, skin was gray as, as was the hair. That it had human teeth, but it was uh, they were in terrible condition, like some were missing. And I wonder if he was old. It ran, it ran with its palms down, not thumbs up like us, and its arms were extra long. This sighting occurred on September 30th of 2013. It was about one in the afternoon. He said it was about seven to eight feet tall. It was, uh, he said that when the sun was hitting the back of it, he could see that the hair was the hair on top of its head was pointy, but he could see through it, and he could see the he- the head was round. It didn't have a crest on it like everyone talks about. Yeah. It was just the hair that made it look pointy. So he he thought that was a kind of strange that and they were staring at each other for about a full minute just looking back and forth and trying to f- figure out what what each person was doing right now the one i saw it had a round head too that and i always tell everybody and they say well you didn't see a big foot like bull it was <laughs> freaking huge in in a ninja wow okay yeah. i got the second photograph up and this is from the side angle See, like, you take that hair off of that back of it right there, uh-huh. and that's exactly the head kind of thing I saw. Except I mean, for it, he it, had it, hair see, on it, his it face, doesn't, it, this doesn't look like like the the Bigfoot that we're used to seeing. And, and it's standing straight up, like the one I saw was standing straight up. He's not all hunched over like that. Right, right. Know? I mean, this looks like a Fu Manchu type of, you know. Yeah, yeah he said it was very muscular. He oh, said man. that he waved to it. After watching it for like a minute, he said it wait. He waved to it, and that's that's when it bared its teeth, and it did yell something at him. It said, "Shihua," uh, is what it, it sounds like. Shihua. Wow. And it turned and uh, it raised its arm and, and turned, and he said it kind of looked like a helicopter because he's, he has his hands up and he spun around and went into the bushes. Wow. And yeah, maybe that means in there. Like up yours and, and uh, Bigfoot. Talk. <laughs> yeah. 20 feet is, is very darn close. To and that's, and that's really close. I mean, that's that's uh, that's why he was able to get such detail, uh, you know, sketch that's here. That's close yeah. enough where he could just... He said when he yelled at him, he could yeah. feel the vibration of the yell. Oh, yeah. just like what we all... Oh, just just <laughs> like that. He was that, that close. Wow. Oh my God. Just like what and we... And he did see another feature on it that made him believe that this was not somebody in a costume. Right. He could see that it was a male. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me get the uh, other picture up there really quick. See, I think if we keep doing what we're doing, we will get a close encounter like yeah. that. And it might go and, and, right and it might happen this weekend. You very well could. Well, Danny, yep, coming up, we're, Danny, we're, you're gonna, closer. Danny, we're gonna we're gonna get some ham and some bologna and tie them around your arms, and we're gonna let you go running around naked. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'll we're gonna it. tie some oranges. You'll do it. <laughs> you 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 I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> I'll take pictures. YouTube, we're gonna get mega hits on this one. <laughs> just as long as you have, just as long as you have the GoPro on your head, dude. That's all I'm asking. Now that we know that that guy up in the, the uh, endangered species knows oh about Bigfoot too, oh we'll give him two GoPros. <laughs> yeah. he's gonna run. And, and, and we're not gonna, gonna say where, and we're not gonna say we're gonna put the other GoPro at either. <laughs> 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 oh God! Yeah, I'm looking forward to this weekend. For all those who don't know, um, this is our annual uh, David Ray Gosta Bigfoot um, Expedition Memorial Day weekend getaway, and this is where we go we still every have to name the area. What that? You know that we that still sketch. Have to name the area. It's the sketch oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah. We do, huh? Um, that sketch that you just put. I want to put like one more thing, one more comment on this guy. Every Bigfoot you see that where everybody draws it, their legs look really short, like they're, you know, like really little. In that sketch, the legs are really long, and that's what I saw. He had big old long legs, and he looked like a basketball star, the one I saw. And he was over 10 feet tall. But I, and I, when I see these clunky looking stuff they put on TV, and it's like, well, who thought of that? You know, <laughs> they don't look anything like it, uh, right. what I seen. Right. So, okay, well, cool deal. Anything else, Mr. Valderrama? That is it. All right. So, okay, so we already um, talked it over, and we have a specific location we're going to wait for you at on Friday. And all right. Um, all right, so we'll talk, obviously, before then and make sure we have all our T's crossed and I's pointed out as far as what we're going to bring. And and I, I, I guess what, we're, we're coming back on Sunday, right? 
Yeah, because you got to do your show, aren't you? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. So. Try. Yeah, you you don't have to do your squat report. Um, because I, I think I was going to do it during the week, so I don't have to worry about. Oh, okay. It. I'm All right. Ready to go. All right. Won't I'm, be as big as I usually do it, but right. That's that's cool. If, in there. Sure, if you want to do that, that's cool. Okay. Um, and uh, if we happen to come across something and see something, get some on video or audio, then you can do the squat report from right here in the studio. We may have to. We may get plenty of to talk about. Yeah, I mean, and, and like I said, you know, there is there is an extra microphone here. You don't if you don't have to be on the in, in you know in front of the camera if you don't want. But if we're cutting it that close. You can just go ahead and do it here, dude. All right. All right? We'll see okay. What we'll see what happens. We come back alive. <laughs> it makes it out. Well, it's not going to be you because you're going to be out running around naked with <laughs> bacon tied around. <laughs> we'll definitely <laughs> run some tape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Danny Valdrama, thank All you right. very much, and we'll see you in a couple of days. Bye, Danny. All right. All right, thanks. Bye, guys. All right. Okay. That was fun. Uh, we, uh, we are having our Bigfoot expedition this weekend. I can't wait. It's been a while since we've actually been up to the location where the windows uh, situation occurred. And Danny, uh, Danny and David Bell, uh, Ray Gosa has gotten a lot of great stuff there because he's been going there for over 20 years. And he's been setting up his cameras forever. All right. Now we got somebody coming up. Um, I got the weirdest call about three days ago. And, um, okay, go ahead. Plug it in. Um Vinny, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Jeff. All right, how's it going? Okay, I, I nobody knows exactly what's going to happen here. Uh, nobody knows the story, so I'm going to brief everybody really quick. Um, okay. You called me, what What day did you call me last week? I think it was uh, Sunday or Sunday, I think, Sunday? Sunday? Or Monday? Monday. I think it was Monday. I Monday, think, yeah, yeah right, I think right. it was Monday. Monday in the morning. And, okay. um, hold on. And, um, and, uh, you told me, well, you know what? You go ahead and tell me what, I mean, t tell me exactly what, um, what, what you told, what you told me. Go ahead and tell everybody. Go ahead. Go for it. Okay. Are we on air right now? Yeah, we are. We're yeah. on the air. Yeah, we are. <laughs> okay. Uh, back, back in 2001, um, I, um, residing in the Sanger area, I, uh, happened to be in a, a laundromat doing my laundry and, uh, and during the course of doing that, uh, Apparently, I heard uh, some uh, two men nearby, and uh, I kind of happened to overhear their conversation. And they were talking about uh, apparently a, a person or what they call an alien uh, was roaming the streets of Sanger. Um, and uh, I just happened to be eavesdropping and listen to that conversation. And then uh, I happened to walk over there and, and uh, introduce myself. And uh, when I did that, they kind of looked at me with a blank look and uh, just walked away. What did the so, guy, What did the guys look like? Were they washing clothes? Yes, they were. Okay, huh? okay. So they were just uh, just talking among themselves. Okay, so right now you don't live in Sangu. You live in northern Sacramento area in Corning, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. What What is your um, What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a legal assistant, uh, as well as a um, I have an education in pri private private investigation. So I'm not licensed. Um, I primarily, primarily uh, uh, conduct uh, missing person searches or locating uh, people, people locator. Okay. To that effect, yes. Okay, and and you live right now, now you live in Corning, which is northern Sacramento area. About 95 minutes north of Sacramento, correct. Okay, cool. Now, how did you get my number? Well, uh, in relation to this uh, incident that occurred back in 19, uh, that is 2001, uh, I apparently uh, looked up the. Um, I, I just came across your your uh, site. Uh, what we call it the uh, uh, website. Okay. In search engine and uh, and, and noticed that uh, you, uh, your organization was uh, from that area, Sanger. Right. And so it immediately brought into uh, <laughs> recollection the incident and and with proximity to your um, type of profession uh, that you're in. Um, it thought it thought you know maybe I should. Uh, you know, give your organization a, a, a jingle here and relate this incident. Right. Because I myself conducted this investigation back in between 2001 and 2003. All right. And I've and never heard, when you called me, dude, this was like totally new. I have never heard such a thing. And when you were telling me this, it was like totally blowing me away. So, okay. So now um, the conversation ended. You're in the laundry mat. Continue off from there. So uh, I decided to uh, so start asking around, talking to people. So uh, I asked a few other people in the uh, laundromat uh, after these guys had left, have they heard anything to that effect of a 
of a uh, peculiar person uh, roaming the streets with supernatural powers. <laughs> well, now, where did you get supernatural powers from? Were they talking like that? Well, they mentioned him, uh, specifically, they mentioned him as an as the alien. Okay. Are you and sure it was so, an illegal alien? <laughs> uh, they, they mentioned this person, uh, they were, uh, during the course of the conversation, they had mentioned that he had certain abilities, uh, special abilities type thing. Okay. Uh, mentioned the word electromagnetic properties that they mentioned. So that kind of rang the bell. Okay. And uh, so I started asking around and uh, went to parks here in the Sanger area um, with my note, pen and note, uh, notepad. And um, people pretty much, uh, when I mentioned, when I uh, would confront a person, uh, they would just say, no, I haven't heard anything to that effect. Uh, or they would just walk away. Uh, like, like uh, they just, yeah, um, walk away. And so understandably, uh, I think anybody would... Uh, react in such behavior if they if you were to ask them about a certain person right uh maybe he thought i was related to the law enforcement i don't know but but the, the things took a peculiar twist jeff here's what happened uh i uh the matter uh the situation took a complete 360 degree turn twist uh, i noticed that uh, i was being observed by just maybe just coincident i mean uh uh, those people were observing me from a distance, men in uh, ties and suits, and uh, I mean ties and shirts, and professional looking. And um, one day I, I was at the park talking. I met this young, this man here, an individual, and we sit down at the picnic table. And I was just trying to break the ice and speaking with him. And as I was speaking with him, these two men came out of nowhere, and and, and told the individual, uh, "Sir, could you please come here?" And so I, I like I was kind of bedazzled. And, and he was maybe about about 10, 10, 15 feet, ten feet away, and I heard I heard these uh, these uh, these uh, per, two men, uh, one of the men t- telling this individual, uh, uh, unless you want to, unless, these were the quote, uh, I'll quote the words, unless you want to uh, go to jail, uh, um, we're warning you to stay away from this person. <laughs> I was like I said, I was be dazzled. I couldn't I understand what this was going on here, and. Um, uh, I was uh, from that uh, during the course of my investigation. I was constantly being pulled over by law enforcement. Believe, believe me, Jeff. I was being asked who I was, where I was from. I said I'm a resident and I was here in the of Sager. And every day I was being confronted and and and, and, and in some cases interrogated. And I thought, you know what? Take, take your station, take your take, uh, investigation to a lower profile. And this went on for about two years. Wow. And in 2005, I moved up to the Northern California area. So what did you, I mean, obviously you tried talking to a lot of people. Correct. Um, what, did, what information did you finally come across? Any good, I mean, did you find out who this person was? Um, or, or, or did they not let you get that close? Uh, well, I, I, um, I kind of spent some time with the nearby uh, parks here, the recreational parks here in the Sanger area, trying to... Uh, uh, you know, uh, investigate uh, as far as interviewing people, and uh, most cases people would just look, uh, take a look at me uh, with a strange look and walk away, um, uh, like frightened. Um, hmm. They just they wanted to divulge any, uh, anything if or even to uh, associate with me. Right. So that yeah, it, it just pretty much it, it, everything took a complete uh, 360, 360 degree uh, did, turn there. Did um, they? Yeah. Did they? Did you ever get an actual description? Of what this person Subject. looked like? Yeah. Uh, I was told that he was uh, uh, maybe uh, middle-aged, um, Hispanic in nature, and they always call uh, the people I spoke with uh, 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 related related him to, to the alien. So I knew something was going on here, and um, hmm. yeah, and, and so did that. Now, you know, after we talked, uh, I told you that, um, you know, I came back to the Sanger area in 2000, and I didn't hear anything about that at all. Now, I have made a lot of connections. Uh, I told you I know the mayor personally of Sanger. As a matter of fact, the mayor, has uh, Joshua Mitchell, has been in the studio, and, and we've actually talked to him about paranormal stuff. So after I talked to you, I actually called him. Um, yes. 
As a matter of fact, it was this, right after I talked to you, I actually um, <clears throat> I text message Joshua via Facebook, and he called me right away, and I was actually driving down Clovis Avenue during, in my work vehicle talking to Joshua, and I told him, you know, have you heard anything about this? And he said, no, because Joshua came to Sanger right around 2006, 2007. So uh -huh. all this that happened um, happened way before his time. But he right. said that he would, you know, look around and talk to people and see what he can come up with. Joshua just happens to be into this paranormal stuff big time. So Correct. I hung up the phone. Um, I called Dick Shepard, who is the director of the Sanger Herald, and left a message, a voice message. At this yes. point in time, now check this out. And I don't know if this is a coincidence. I don't think so. But after I um, left the message on his voicemail, Dick Shepard, I arrived at my location at uh, the North Avenue and the 41 Freeway, right around there. I was at a big business, was going to repair a phone line. I had got out of my work van, and as soon as I got out, I heard a helicopter. And it was coming towards me, and I said, okay, you know, big deal, helicopter. So I stopped. Whenever I hear a helicopter, because of the profession that I'm in, I always look at it because you never know what type of helicopter it would be. You know, it could be an army helicopter or whatever. And this looked like a generic, regular helicopter. It was coming right at me. It was pretty low. And then it came up, came up at me, and I'm in a parking lot of this big business, right? And then I'm looking up at it, and it's green with some white numbers and letters on the side. And then the helicopter circled me, did a 360 around me. I mean, I'm, I was dead center. The helicopter made a 360 right over me in the parking lot and went right back the way it came. And I'm going, what? And this was right after I talked to Joshua Mitchell and left the message at Dick, with Dick Shepard. This, this helicopter came, I'm thinking it came from Chandler Airport. Now that's the way it was coming from. And it made a, right. th it made a 360 right above my head and headed right back to Chandler Airport. And I'm going, okay, why did it make a U-turn right above me? It could have made a U-turn anywhere, but it made a U-turn right above me. And I stopped and said, no, no, no way. Why would it do that? I just, coincidence that, you know, you had just called me that morning. I had talked to Joshua Mitchell and then also Dick Shepard. And now I got this helicopter, green helicopter with some, it just, that, that just blew me away right there. Then I'm going, maybe there is something to the story. So that's why I called you and I wanted you to come on the air because if uh, you know we have a lot of people who listen and watch in the Sanger area and the Fresno area I want to know if anybody ever witnessed or remember seeing a gentleman of this description that you just you know told us about I want them to call me and let me know about it or send me an email because uh, this is weird um, you know I've had stories in the past so much UFO activity over Sanger and Fresno especially Sanger for some reason there's a lot of stuff going on in Sanger and um yeah like like ufos parking in the um yes what do they call them um, uh, the drainage um or, uh, reservoir things um, yeah what is it called? um uh, yes well you know where they dig the what do you call those oh my god is this i don't know uh, they, complete, what it's where they put the water you know when the water runs off in the gutters in those oh my god it completely canal no, no it's it, they, they dig those holes on the side of the streets where when it rains all the water goes in there Oh my God! I've completely spaced out. I don't know what it is. Either. Okay. Well, anyways, um, I've had many reports of of UFOs literally hovering in those reservoirs and kicking it there. In Sanger. Yeah, in Sanger. Uh, so, yeah, you know, um, when you told me about this, Benny, I was not. Was I surprised a little bit because something of that nature of a of a story I should have known about it, and I haven't. Nobody has ever told me about a story like that. A ponding basin. Thank you, ponding basin. Uh, yeah. so, so when you drive by a, U, a ponding basin, look in there. Oh, yeah. there could be UFOs in them. Um, we had that, remember that one location over here on Ashland, yeah. and we found out that That's where right. did it go? Well, there was a ponding basin. It was hiding in there. So, mm -hmm. so, what, uh, so, Benny, what have you done since then? Have you followed up on anything or heard anything lately? Or? Well, uh from my, from, my, from my perspective, um, it is an ongoing investigation on a very low profile. If you ask me, I'm 99% uh, sure, almost sure, that the uh, U.S. Department of uh, Defense 
get involved, and they're scrutinizing the situation. And uh, from my assessment and view, that that's what's going on. Uh, let me ask. Let me tell you this. I was set on the rear, the rear, way out in duties out here, out the country, way out, uh, pretty much out of nowhere out here. And every morning, about um, some mornings, about 5:30 a.m., a helicopter flies maybe about what 100 feet above my home, flies uh, on regular schedule. Now that's kind of coincidental, don't you think? I mean, yeah, you know, you live in the middle of well, nowhere. Well, where you're at right now, you mean? Yes. How long has it been happening? It went on for about maybe six months. Have you really been getting involved in this particular case for that? I mean, actually, had been getting into it more in the past six months. Uh, with the same, uh, with the same uh, pace and same um, hmm. degree of um, gravity. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And that's the reason why I contacted you because. Uh, this case, this situation, the incident back in between 2001 and 2003 was so, I, I was almost 100% uh, uh, certain that this, I mean, everybody knew it the whole time, but this was the talk of the town and Sanger back then. Um, and I, my, my guess is that people, I just want to talk about it openly, they're fearful, and that's what's going on, yeah. Then I, then I got to get in there and, and talk, because I know so many people in Sanger, and I know a lot of people who are way up there in Sanger that, I should be able to find something. So um, I, I need to get in there and really start asking around because uh, um, somebody should know something. I mean, that's, that's something. If, I mean, if everybody's talking about it, even the police officers, I maybe I might be able to, you know, talk to somebody in that in that area and find out, you know, what's going on. But I wonder, uh, I wonder if Fat Jack would know. You know, Fat um, he was a cop back then. No, actually, I think he retired before then. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, what? Oh no, just a live stream. So, um, so yeah, um, I I don't know. Um, but I appreciate you calling me and letting me know about this, um, because like I said, I've never heard of this story or anything about it. But what really put me over the top and wanted you to come on here was that helicopter incident. I found that <clears throat> really weird and eerie. That right after I talked to all three of you guys, that this helicopter circled me, like it was saying, "Leave it alone." Like, like that happens every time we touch on something yeah. that is like sensitive right something like that happens yes. so it, we're kind of more in tune with that stuff. right yeah um either either a vehicle will be parked out in front of our house uh, at Alan's house if we're getting too close to something or we'll be followed or our t our phones will you know get cut off in the middle of, of a conversation whoever we're talking to about a certain case in this instant you know the helicopter thing. I, you know, it, it it there was so much where it just it circled around me. Dang it, and it went back. That that was telling me something to leave it alone. That that's what they're trying to tell me. So there, I think there is something to the story. Now we just need to get to, you know contact more people and find out. So we'll, we'll have to stay in touch with you as we find out things. Yes, yeah, most definitely. So okay. And you know, Jeff, I will I will, uh, I will uh, read, read, reiterate this. Uh, we are under observation. I'll tell you that at this point, we are under observation. Oh yeah, oh, I've always, well we've always been. Yeah. And 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 you getting yourself involved in whatever this thing is about, then you know they're obviously they're looking at you, uh, looking at oh, yeah. you, and so uh, yeah, I can say that that that's definitely a fact. So, but for a helicopter to circle around me like that after I made some calls, um, it's telling me that there's something definitely up to this, whatever the story is about. So, I'm not surprised. So, all right, right on, Vinny. Oh, I appreciate you uh, coming on and telling everybody. Now, now the reason why I wanted him to come on is that if there's anybody in the Sanger area or you used to live in the Sanger area between those years, and if you saw somebody like that or know of what we're talking about, I want you to give me a call at my hotline at area code 559-287-8367 or email me at sangerparanormal at AOL.com. You can go to Paranormal Central. Nope. Yeah, paranormalcentral.net, and there's a contact form, really simple. If you want to just send me a, uh, an email, that way you can, and uh, that will get it. And uh, let's find out what's going on here. So, yeah. all right. We can keep you anonymous. Yep, so, absolutely. Yeah. So, all right, Vinny, thank you very much. And if you come across anything about this case, give me a call, okay? I'll definitely, definitely give, you, give you posted, Jeff. Okay, right thanks, on. man. Appreciate thank it. You. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. I don't know what to say about that. Um, I would. I was not going to have him come on the air, but what threw me for a loop was that helicopter. Uh, you know, you guys have to understand. It's um, it's it, 
the helicopter literally circled me. I was out there by myself in this parking lot before this business opened and it circled me and went back. So, uh, and it was a green helicopter with white lettering on the side. I mean, white numbers and letters, like a call signal type of deal. It wasn't a CHP, it wasn't a sheriff. I know what those helicopters look like and it wasn't military. Uh, so, and then Chandler Airport, I know that the National Guard is out there and Alan was saying that, you know, we do have FBI and CIA here in Fresno and they do have their helicopters parked I know at the front of the Chandler, airport yeah. and at Chandler. So I was not surprised that that helicopter was coming towards me. So, all right. Well, that was interesting. That was cool. So, all right. Um, okay. We got uh, 60 minutes left. I am looking at my notes. Um, we got another call. It was yesterday on my 24-hour hotline. I just want to touch across really quick. I've been getting a lot of calls, and this has been – from around the United States. Um, you know, when I tell them, how did you get my number? They are typing in, Googling paranormal hotline and my number is coming up. So that's why we're getting all these calls. Um, on Saturday, let's see, on Friday night, we're coming home from the Grizzly game. I got a call coming in. <clears throat> this is the first call actually. And it was some girls from Florida who were messing with the Ouija board. And uh, some things started to happen to them. And I said, well, you guys basically did a big time no-no. What's wrong, Emerald? Got nose. You got a bloody nose? Yeah. Uh-oh. Okay, Emerald's got to go out. She's got a bloody nose. I didn't hear her that hard. I'm okay. No, you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, be getting too hot so you know, they wanted some information on, you know, why were these things happening? And I said, well, did you guys mess with the Ouija board? And she said, how did you know? And I'm like, Really? Don't mess. They think, you know, you can buy Ouija boards now at um, Toys, Toys R, R Us. Us. You can. At Walmart. Leave, Everywhere. Leave them alone. Unless if you know how to use them. Okay. Uh, well, you know, they opened up something and they were really, they were really, really scared because things were happening and uh, doors were getting knocked and scratched and they were screaming and they were really scared and I said... I don't know what to do. I can't. I'm not in Florida. I can't help you. But um, if you are really scared and if this is ongoing, then you need to contact the paranormal investigation team there in Florida that can help you. Uh, Damn! Tell them to buy me a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, don't mess with Ouija boards, guys. These are not toys yet. They do sell them at toy stores, which is kind of like, uh, so don't do that. Okay. Um, the second call that I got was yesterday. And it was from Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, my wife is involved in this one because I put it on speakerphone. And I'm going to make it, it's a long story. It's an ongoing thing. They keep calling back and forth. But basically what happened is uh, yesterday during the morning, they found needles, three needles around in their home. One was um, stuck in the chair uh, of a chair where this lady sits. It was stuck in a chair, pointing upward. The other needle was by the, her iPhone, and the other needle was in the carpet, but like if it was hammered uh, butt end first and the point upward. Was it like syringe needles? No, like no, 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 sewing, sewing needles? needles. Wow. So she's going, you know. Um, you can't see those, man. You're well, like... but, but they've, they've lived there for two years, and all of a sudden, you know, they are, they're finding these needles everywhere, and, you know, they went to the location where they had these needles, you know, I, I don't know, you call them like a little tomato thing and they have yeah. the needles, right? And some were missing. Pin cushion. Yeah, pin cushion. And they go, how did the needles get out from this drawer down to these floors? And they were tripping. So we started trying to figure out, okay, is somebody trying to send you a message? Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, I said, okay, well, let's do this. Um, get the rest of the needles that you have, which were like four or five left. And I told them, get some tape, put the needles on the tape and tape them up. So that way they're secured in this tape. And they placed the tape with the needles inside on the dresser drawer. The next morning they woke up, it was gone. And they freaking are calling me, their mom. And, 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 and at, at, while her daughter is talking to me on the phone, you can hear her mom in the, in the drawer taking everything out. Going, where did it go? Where did it go? And they're, she's freaking out. They're going, what the heck is going on here? So we're trying to figure out, okay, is somebody trying to send you a message? Is it your dad? Is it your, you know, because your, their, their father's dead? Maybe it's their grandma or whatever. And then they go, go in the kitchen, and then the needles 
are by the faucet by the window of the kitchen. And she's going, we didn't put it there, Jeff. We didn't put it. And they're freaking out. They're freaking out. So we're trying to figure out, you know, is somebody trying to tell them something? And um, so, you know, we don't know who it is who's doing it. Obviously, it's only them two in their house or their apartment or wherever they're at. I think it's a house. Um, there's nobody else in the house. It's, you know, is there somebody sleepwalking and doing this? We don't know. Um, and we're trying to get to the bottom of this. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is that these are the type of calls that we're getting. And people are freaking out. They have no place to go, no place to talk to. They go on the Internet. They find our number and they call me. And what's odd about this, though, is that three days prior to this happening, Cheryl, while asleep, and, and she told me this when she got up. She said, I felt somebody poke me with a needle in my big toe. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, what? I sure it wasn't the cat? I'm going, no. And this was three days ago, prior to this call coming in. Okay, and she goes, no, it, looked, it felt like somebody got a needle and poked me in the foot. And that's what woke me up. And she told me that. And I'm going, and she goes, and she's looking around and she, and she doesn't see anything there. And I'm going, okay, whatever. And then all of a sudden we get this call. And then while we're talking on the phone, the speakerphone, she goes, <gasps> and then she looks at me and goes, the needle in my foot. Because the lady got stuck in her needle in her foot too when she was walking on the carpet. Okay, so it's like what? That's cool. Okay, I mean, weird, but weird, cool. but cool. Yeah. So wow. it's like, was it meant for them to call us? Like we knew this phone call was coming in. <laughs> so it's like, okay, then they were meant to call us. Um, we were expecting the call to come in. It was weird that you know, show Diane got uh, you know she had pain in her big toe and it was a needle. That, that she told me it felt like a needle poked, you know, and all of a sudden we we're getting this call about needles. Um, so I think something is trying to tell that family something. While, while her father is passed away and her grandmother's passed away, and we think maybe they're trying to tell him something. Uh, you know, she's been having problems with her ex or her ex-boyfriend, not a very nice guy. So maybe there's something about that. I don't know. But um, they, I told them now to get the tape put it in a plastic baggie and they're going to put it in the toilet tank and close a lid on it and see what happens um, and see if it gets taken out and placed someplace. Um, but we're going to continue on with that investigation. I'm going to continue trying to help them over the phone. Very cool uh, that this is happening. You know, um, people are asking for our help and we are giving it to them because is they... That, is that like around here? Where not Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, yeah. We're yeah. not going there. No. Buy a ticket. I'll go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's kind of cool that, you know, we're getting these calls from all over the United yeah. States. We are. You know, so, um, you know... I know I'm, you get like five friend requests a day yeah. on the Facebook and I even had, like, I get weird messages. Somebody messaged me and said, uh, God told them, you know, that right. we're... We're soul brothers. You know, <laughs> like, cool. Okay. <laughs> but uh, that's the kind of stuff that uh, we're getting, and that's kind of cool. Um, you know, I can't wait that, you know, when we do finally make it and we do have a budget and stuff, that this is where we can actually get our team to go fly out there to try to help these right. people and, just, you know, put it on the air. I mean, this is the type of stuff that people want to see that's going on, real stuff. So, you know, uh, hopefully that's going to happen soon. You know, there's so much that we can do. Yeah, um, I, want, I want to say, like, now, there is some. They, they, we are soul brothers now because I have some RSD and people that are, like, in a lot of pain, and that's how we talk. This is not you guys, okay? This is, like, somebody I didn't even know coming from a different country. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fun. I mean, now my Facebook is really cool. It has all these different languages, you know, and you have to hit C translation to read it. And it's interesting. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's getting exciting. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know what to say. I mean, um, there's just so many good things happening. So um, something else that I want to talk about really quick here is... It happens to be the 30th, oops, what happened there? It happens to be the 30th anniversary of Ghostbusters. And, no way. And they are having an, uh, an exhibit in, uh, in Los Angeles, and I'm going to give you some information. So if you happen to be in the Los Angeles area, and uh, the information that I am getting right now, it's um, the 30th anniversary art show, an exhibit between uh, May the 17th and June the 1st, and this is at uh, the Gallery West 
on Melrose Avenue, 7308 Melrose Avenue in Los Angeles. If uh, you guys are down there and want to go check out all this cool stuff on the Ghostbusters, the 30th anniversary, and uh, so go down there. I wish I was down there. I, we'd be there in a heartbeat. Well, you know what? We might be taking a trip to Los Angeles anyways. Uh, you know, yeah, a couple yeah. of them. Yeah, so, we'll have to stop you know, in there. and you guys all know that, you know, um, a couple of the networks want us to go out there to L.A. here pretty quick. Now, I just talked to Anthony, and he is pretty close to finishing up the editing on the music on the actual final cut of the episode that we're, that we're going to take and show, you know, the, uh, the networks in L.A. So um, that's going to be ready here. I know the guy from... And you see, it's coming back uh, from uh, France, and he'd be back on Monday, I think, which is tomorrow. So I think he's going to be calling me and finding out when we can go down there. So um, we got to get an agent here pretty darn quick. I've sent out many emails already on Friday, um, and hopefully somebody will call us and assist us in this because it's it's going to happen, yeah. and it's going to happen really quick. What's cool is any agent is doesn't really have to do much. I mean, like normally the agent goes and sets the appointment and tries to sell everything right. and do all that, but only they don't got to do any of that. We have the appointment. <laughs> so if you're an agent already and you just want to, you know, like go help us uh, negotiate a contract, let us know. <laughs> so, um, all right. Uh, let's see what else can we talk about. Well, obviously, you know, we're going this weekend to uh, the spot up in the mountains. Hopefully the gate's going to be open. I shouldn't. I, I shouldn't see why it would not be open. I, I couldn't get through. I called three times, um, and I think it was because it was a weekend. Oh, okay. I didn't think of it, you know, to call until Saturday. But I'm going to call tomorrow. Okay. I'm getting all my gear out and cleaned up, and I got three tents set up. I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I, I got to get all I my. Can't wait. Got to get all my equipment, charge all my batteries. Um, so right on. So I'm. I'm going to look on Facebook here really quick. Because that's where I get uh, all of my up-to-date information and see what's going on in the world. Uh, see if I have any good con uh, anybody just email me or text me over some good stuff. It's amazing that um, the Bigfoot thing is so taken off. Right. I mean, it's like the biggest topic. Like, what was it? Danny was showing. Uh, um, where was it? And they had two Bigfoots in the... Was it the beginning of a, uh, a parade or something? Yeah, and there's these two Bigfoots dancing around in the street and all these cops surrounding them. You know, it's like <laughs> Bigfoot is turning into like this really big phenomenon. Phenomenon. And, <laughs> and everybody wants to like cash in on it right now. It's like craziness. Um, <clears throat> something else that's going on is David Polites. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. All right, all right. Let's yeah. talk about David Polites. Oh. For all those who don't know about David Polites, the missing 411 book, um, I interviewed. David Polites with Alan in the room. How long ago? What was the date on that? Ah oh, man, it was like it was in 2012. So I, th I think oh, I, really I think it was, that I thought it was 20 longer than that. Mm, no? It might have been. I I can't it was remember. In, it was in that room in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've been in this room now going on two years. Ah oh, man, I can look. Okay. Real fast, um, and the reason why we're bringing up uh, David Polites is that I have I was the only show that did a three-hour show on him. Okay, um, and this is three hours with no commercial breaks. All right, mm -hmm. and um, and you got him to say Bigfoot. <laughs> um, I think I'm the only one that's ever done that. Uh, I think, according to Alan, but well, he hasn't. He he dodges the question. He dodges the question on everyone else. Okay. Um, well, when I found out. Is it, this is what See, we're finding out. when he very, very first wrote the book. He didn't. He only had one book out. Now he has, you know, yeah. East, West, Canada. This is Canada, what we're finding Canada. out, and it's very flattering to us um, that we know people are watching us and listening to our show, and that's awesome. And what I mean by that is people in the industry, people who have other shows. Um, we found out that after we do our show, then another show will end up having the guest the day after. Uh, or you know, a couple of days after us, and it's not because they're on a book tour or whatever. It just we, we happen to grab weird, you know, people at certain times. You know, David Polites. I got three hours out of him, and I and I actually had him to say Bigfoot. Um, it just so happens tonight George Knapp is going to have him, and for four hours, and I think that's the first for Coast to Coast. 
And yeah, uh, yeah, and he's supposed to share something too. I, I'm going to be listening. So we need to be. All, I, I actually I mean, think he's going to say Bigfoot again <laughs> for the second time. <laughs> the, only the second time, right? Right. So what, what's the date yeah. on that? The same? Uh, no, it yeah. says when I loaded. it. Oh, when you loaded right? it, yeah. yeah. So, um, so that you know, I, I was I was just on. Um, I know it was like maybe three or it was a it, while. It was about ago. four years yeah. ago, I think. It was yeah. a while ago. So, um, I was just on uh, on. Tuesday of last week, I was on KMJ Radio down here in Fresno. Um, Chris Daniel asked me to come in because now of the Hoop Love Paranormal, it just so happened that Chris Daniel does follow me. I know he does because I see him on my Facebook, you know, watching list. Um, you know, now they're starting to do Tin Hat Tuesday on KMJ at the Chris Daniel Show, which means Tin Hat Tuesday. It's like paranormal stuff. Well, they asked me to come in last week and talk about paranormal, uh, talk about Bigfoot. Why? Because you know Bigfoot is the number one subject right now, all over the place. Everybody's talking about Bigfoot. Everybody loves Bigfoot. You know that's where the money is. Obviously, look at Todd Standing, two point six million, whatever, for his documentary. Are you kidding me? Um, so uh, you know, people are are getting on the bandwagon and they want to know what's going on. I have a feeling that pretty soon something very big is going to happen that's going to open up a lot of people's eyes. You know, when Chris Daniel was asking me some questions, luckily I was able to answer them. And, and cause you know, people, they're, they're, the questions people have is why haven't we found a body? All right. Where's the bone? Where's the bones? Where's the body? Well, that's the obvious answer to that. I mean, come on, you guys, really something dies in the forest. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be eaten by nature. It's as simple as that, you know. And he was telling me, asking me questions, and I was answering them. Um, and I think I did pretty good. And I think they're going to have me back. I don't know when, maybe to talk about UFOs. But what I'm trying to say is, paranormal, Bigfoot, everybody loves this stuff. Everybody. Um, and and it's kind of cool that you know you know KMJ used to have coast to coast, and they lost it um, to uh, iHeart. Um, what, what, I don't remember the network, but they lost coast to coast, so they don't have anything now on that station. I've been trying to ask them to bring me on or to bring us on uh, for like a, a one day a week type of show, um, but uh, they haven't really budged. Maybe they're trying the the Tuesday Tin Hat Tuesday to see if people like it, and then it looks like they do. I think people are really getting into that stuff. So, but it might be too late. Yep. It might be too late for the do like a KMJ. Yeah, you know, not unless they're gonna like make it go nationwide, you know, because that's how well, it, that's how that's how it starts though. Like for example, that's how Art Bell starts. You know, mm -hmm. you, Art Bell started on one station, and 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 you know, people came in and started picking him. Wasn't Art Bell just on Sundays? Mm. Keith, can you can you uh, uh, email or, or text uh, Emerald back? And wasn't Art Bell on Sundays only Sunday nights when he first started? And I, we're waiting for a response. I, I listen to him like every night. We're waiting for a response. Years. Not unless uh, Keith is in the kitchen making food and he's not listening. <laughs> Earth, the, Earth the Keith. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're messaging or we're trying to get hold of uh, Art Bell's uh, webmaster, Keith. He would know too. Oh, yeah, he would because he started he with uh, with uh, Art Bell. So we're trying to – what? Nothing yet? No. So um, Earth the Keith, Earth the Keith. Did Art Bell start on Sundays only? Sunday nights. I remember it was Sunday nights only. I think that's how he first started, was Sunday nights only. But anyways, um, so very cool. Okay, um, I am looking at my notes. He did Dreamland Sundays Su on Sunday. Okay, and that was, but not during the week, though. Just Sundays? Right, that's where he started, right? And not sure. Huh? He's not sure. It what do you a, mean? He's been with them since the very beginning. Yeah, but it was a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. I mean, well, I remember Dreamland. That's when I used to listen to him. Me too. From the land of Nod. <laughs> <laughs> the land of Nod. In the high desert yeah. and the <laughs> land of Nod. I used to love that stuff. Yeah, so, okay. It used to uh, scare me so bad. Man, I lived out in the sticks in the middle of nowhere. Uh-huh. And my gate to get in my property was almost an eighth of a mile from my house. Mm -hmm. And I had to get out, open the gate. And then drive through it and then get out and close the gate, you know. And I tell you, sometimes, man, I had to think about it. <laughs> you bet. And they'd be talking about something so scary, I didn't want to get out of my car. You know? <laughs> so, He's saying that he did politics on weeknights and then the paranormal 
was Sundays. Ah, I remember. Ah, I remember. Yeah. yeah, so that's what Sundays. And all of a sudden, it took off, and they brought him in five days a week. Or and then they had, uh, it, you know, seven was too much for him. And he had a, I believe George Knapp doing on Sundays, and then I don't know what was going on Saturdays, if anything was. But uh, okay, cool. That answers my question. Thank yeah, you, Keith. Ian Punnett and uh, um, what was John B. Wells. Mm -hmm. So okay, uh, I'm looking at my notes again. Um, I heard, and I don't know if this is fact, I've heard a couple of things about the Yellowstone, Utah, and that area, that they are removing nuclear weapons from the silos out there. And a matter of fact, a couple of posts were posted on my wall at Facebook, uh, citing that, you know, the movement, earthquake movement has been occurring a lot lately, and this, has, this might have something to do with it. Um, again, you know, Yellowstone happens to be the biggest volcano that is uh, on standby mode and if it goes off then it's going to be a big boom um, I, I think I mean true I think we don't need him really what, what are you talking about I, I think they could get rid of all the nuclear weapons well I think no we I, I think stuff that oh yeah yeah well yeah. I, I think I think that no they're removing the nuclear weapons because if the Yellowstone right. goes off then those nuclear weapons are going to be lost and there's like 50 of them or something like that in silos in that area so and and again do we have proof I, I it's just hearsay right now um you know supposedly there was some some activity in the newspaper somebody posted on YouTube and they actually showed them removing the nukes out of these silos in that area um and uh, well, I, I don't know. You know, they're, they are saying that they're suppressing the um, the earthquake activity on the USGS and all that. They're taking out all of it from that area because there's just a lot of movement in that area, may, mainly from the magnum uh, from the earthquake. The lava is moving a lot, and it, that's where they're getting all the rumblings. Uh, so I don't know. Um, that's what I have been hearing. There has been several posts out there about that. Uh, you know, again, um, I am telling you this is because this is what I'm I've been hearing over the net and through my sources. So, uh, again, I'm I'm telling you this is because I'm just keeping you in the loop. And what I have been, you know, been uh, coming across my desk. I want I want to let you guys know what's going on as well. So, all right. So, um, what else is going on here? Um, I am. I'm probably going to listen to David Plyce tonight. Probably with my earphones. I will. And and see what's going on. So yeah. Um, obviously he has a new book coming out. Um, hopefully he'll come on our show. I'm sure he will because I remember he, you know, we posted. You posted Alan our interview with him on YouTube, and within you know a month or so we've got eleven thousand hits on YouTube. Right. And he actually emailed you or found out wanted to find out because his book was you know going off the shelves. And he wanted to know why, why, why all of a sudden my book is being sold and 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 they're take, and they're taking orders like crazy. Well, I'm not saying it was us, but it just so happened it was in the same time time period of the video being placed. Somebody took that video and placed it, who knows where. Well, they they've been sharing it. It's been shared like 20 times mm -hmm. in different places, embedded. I mean. Once you get so far in YouTube, they tell you all this information and you can track it. And then he actually, uh, David Polites went on, if, you, if you're a friend of his on, on uh, Facebook, he went and gave a special message to all the Facebook people and said he was going to have a special like release tonight on the four-hour show. And he was going to talk about, he was letting us know in advance, you know, he didn't give away what it was, right. but only he was like letting everybody know that to tune in because it was going to be a really extra special show and he was going to give up some information that he never talked about. Ooh, so that's going to be a good one then. Yeah, okay. and I can hardly wait to hear what this is. Yeah, you know. a, okay, um, information for those who live in the area of where we live in Fresno, Central Valley. Um, our official house band, Possessed Tranquility, is having a CD release party with a video debut showing on July the 25th. And that is going to be at the uh, Fulton 55 in downtown Fresno. We are going to be there. Everybody who is involved in the show is going to be there. Um, I can't wait. I've seen parts of the video, very, very just small parts. Yeah, me too. It's really good. Um, and I can't wait to see that video. We'll have a booth set up, and you can come by, say hi, and 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 uh, we'll have some pictures that we'll be signing and all that. Because 
people are asking for them, okay? I mean, that's just the way it is. So um, we're getting tired of people asking, so finally we're going to have some made. That's you know why what? we the had... The t-shirt guy called me, but I, I forgot to call him back. The, 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 the same t-shirt guy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no way. He finally called me back, and, and I <sighs> I didn't know it. I just caught the message this morning. So maybe some t-shirts Oh my gosh, yes. pretty soon. So we'll have to. I hope he didn't get mad. I hope it hasn't. I didn't see the date, you know, so I, it might have oh. been a week or two. Okay, then, yeah, you have to um, you have to get back. Yeah, some good-looking stuff, you guys. I don't want to get you excited, but it's good. Yeah, so... um. Well, it says, uh, um, you know, Elizabeth just sent me a, a message, and Whitley Strieber hosted Dreamland on Sunday nights. That was, I think, after Art Bell got the weekly gig. Yeah. Then the Sunday thing was too much, and then Whitley Strieber took over Sunday nights. That That's what happened. So, All right, thanks, Elizabeth, for that. And let me go back to what I was... Um, again, you know, Possess Tranquility is going to pre- be performing live, and they're gonna we're going to show their debut video on july the 25th at the fulton 55 we will all be there we want everybody to come by and show up okay dang i'm gonna have to change my i was supposed to be on a show on the 25th on heidi hollis's Um, outlander but only i'll change the outlander thing this is more important okay um also goonies 2 it looks like it's going to be filmed um a lot of people are up in the air about that uh, you know, Goonies is one of those movies where if it comes on TV and you're going through the channels, I'm going to stop and I'm going to watch it. It's as simple as that, you know, just like, you know, all of my other favorite movies. Goonies is right up there. It's just, um, you I know. I just hope they can do it right. Yeah. Because this will be hard to follow the first one. Yeah. And, and and hopefully they'll get they'll bring back all of the original actors just that they're at a different, you know, Actually, very older now, <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping that you know if Steven Spielberg is involved, that and maybe somebody else uh, as far as directing it, that they're going to come up with a good script, and and I'm hoping that they're going to you know pull it off because I can't wait because yeah it just it, it yeah I'm going to go see it heck yeah in a heartbeat. Um, all right, so um, what else is going on? Uh, I'm looking through my oh. There's another show coming out on um, the Discovery Channel uh, called To Kill a Bigfoot. Did you hear about that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about okay. that. Yeah, this yeah, was like yeah. four older guys, though. Mm-hmm. Like, like I guess guys that have I been... I think they're crazy. <laughs> well, you know mm-hmm. what? Um, you know, we had the show with Kathy Strain mm-hmm. two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and um, she basically came out. If you didn't listen or watch this show, I advise you to go back in our archives at uh, paranormalcentral.net you know after every show Alan downloads it to YouTube and places the link on the archives page in paranormalcentral.net Kathy Strain works for the government all right she gets paid by them she pretty much said on this show that um, you know she is willing to shoot one because we need a body she, we well, need she's, a, a, she's a scientist she's a scientist that's, so she, that's how they are it's yeah. all about science guys mm-hmm. okay people were slamming us after the show like how could you kill a bigfoot oh my god poor thing well you know what um people die every day in this world thousands of people die every day okay why aren't you going out there and um trying to you know do world peace or whatever i i understand you know, it's, it's cold-hearted and it's not cool to kill something. But uh, in order to preserve a, a specific species and put them on the endangered list, you need a body. As simple as that. All right? You do. So, you know, Kathy Strain, when she was on the show, when I didn't even know and Alan didn't even know, she came out and said, oh, and by the way, I have seen two personally. And we were like, What? So you have a U.S. government official who works for the government, who is the uh, archaeologist and and historian for the Native Americans in the Stanislaw Forest area. <clears throat> she came out and said, "Yeah, I've seen two of them." And I and she even said, "If if this particular incident that she that she was as not in the right location, she was going to shoot one. She was going to shoot it. Yeah. And that's what she was going to do um, because scientists that's a scientist needs a body. They better be ready to be attacked." You know that. I mean, I, I'm serious because she even said there was more than one where right. she was at, you uh-huh. know. And, man, you shoot one, they, they hang out in groups. And you think you're, you're alone, I mean, and then all of a sudden you shoot one, and the next thing you know you got two or three of them coming at you. You better be prepared for that. Anybody that's going out to shoot one and they're by themselves, you're an idiot because you will not come back. And you just might shoot a Bigfoot, but you will not come back. I guarantee it. 
you'll be a disappeared person. You know, that that would be the so unwise. You know, in fact, after that show, there was something that um, a lot of people wanted to talk about with me. And it was the fact when she talked about uh, her husband, you know, the Bigfoot was in the bush. Right. And she she had him go look, you know, and he was he went over there and he said that all there was was a couple of logs in the bush. And then later on, um, those logs took off, got up and took off. Right. They weren't logs that he was within. He was within reach of like reaching down and he actually could have touched them. And he didn't see a Bigfoot. He saw logs. That just goes to show you what I say all the time, that they're forest ninjas. That is how good they are. I mean, it's daytime. The guy goes over and looks in a bush and sees logs laying on the ground. And it's really a Bigfoot. I mean, I don't know that how... That's how good they hide. So... I mean, I tell everybody all the time they're ninjas, forest ninjas. And I'm starting to see that now everywhere, too, the ninja thing. And people talking about it, saying, calling them ninjas. I even saw it on a Cafe Press. Like <laughs> you get a coffee your, pot. Somebody like, stole your idea. <laughs> yeah, they, they, I mean, I don't care. I have a better idea, only I just, I'm not an artist. I need somebody that can help me draw a forest ninja. Because I could, I'll come out with T-shirts and coffee cups and everything with Forest Ninja on it. Right. But, but only, man, you know, I think that they could hide. I wonder, out of all the people that are listening that go out camping and, and hunting and fishing and go out in the woods, I bet you don't know how many times you were within arm's reach of a Bigfoot and didn't even know it. Your whole life, you know, like. I bet there was so many times there was a Bigfoot right there, right next to you, and you didn't even know it. I think you're right, because uh, they could easily be very quiet and still and look like a tree stump. Yeah, or or a log laying on the ground. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that probably has happened to us many of times up there, and um, we just go right by them and uh, not even know they're there. Um, I'm... I'm Pulling up, I, what I want to show you guys right now, I'm, I'm trying to find it on the internet, and I found it it's on my Facebook wall, very, very, at the very, very bottom, is the actual trailer for Todd Standing's film. I want to show you guys oh, you, that. You got that? Yeah. Ooh, this Let me, is I'm good. I'm trying to get it right now. Hold on, guys. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to hitting the woods this time. Um, I have a cot, and I'm not going to lay on the ground. <laughs> when I actually went and bought a cot, I'll be, like, on a bed. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I want an RV. Yeah, um, that would be the aisle thing, the, the, the thing to do to have that. Okay, here we go. Oh, uh, there it is. All right, let me, um, let me find out if we are control bar. All right, let me go to screen. All right, uh, I'm going to go. This is really ahead. good, you guys. Pay I'm going to go ahead and play it right now. Let me make sure that the volume is up so you can hear and it. All the ones on Art Bell, you can hear it. You don't need to see it. So listen up. Um, they should hear it. Um, I don't think so. I don't think they're going to be able to hear it. Doggone it. Um, hold on. Let me think about this. Let me think about this. Um, Is it, what is there something we have to do to make them let them hear? Yeah, you know that's not gonna work. No, the, that 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 won't work either. So you know what, I can't play it. Well, we'll, we'll play it next week. Hold that, because we'll have it we'll have it rigged up for you guys. So unfortunately, well, it when we played the video earlier, oh, it didn't have sound, so it didn't even matter. Yeah, we were just talking about it. Right. Hmm. We're gonna call two tabs. Yeah, we're gonna have to work on that problem. Yeah, right? it's it's just one of those things where, um, yeah, unfortunately, it's just the way it is. Uh, because I don't want to leave the Art Bell, you know, those guys out in the and uh, that that would suck. So it's really fun watching you do that, though. Like all the people on live stream can see what you're doing. Yeah. You know? Like, oh, oh look, you're about to close two tabs. Do you really <laughs> want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to get it on there, guys. So okay, next next week we'll have it going. So. All right. Um, what else? What else? What else? Emerald, what's going on with you? Have you seen anything lately with your gift? No. Why not? 
because there's got to be some stuff going on. <laughs> she's smiling no. like, oh no. yeah, she did, no. but only she's not going to tell us. No. Hey, you were telling me about <laughs> about about a, the Hat Man. Oh, it's okay. Um, I was talking to this guy, and he just brought it up. We were just talking about because I mentioned that I work with you guys, uh-huh. and he's like, oh no way! Like we were going down Sanger to pick up one of my buddies. And on the side of the road, there's this guy dressed in all black, had a hat on and a briefcase, like hitchhiking. And they almost stopped to pick him up, but they didn't. And then they get to Sanger and they tell their friend. And their friend was like, yo, man, I'm glad you didn't pick him up because that's we call him the hat man. They looked him up online and everything. And I guess he's like a hitchhiker where you can't really see his face. But he he is. He's dressed in all black, black uh, trench coat, hat, briefcase. And legend quote unquote says that if you pick him up he'll tell you how many more years you have to live Ooh. and then within that year you'll see him outside your window or something like that and then the next day you're done oh so, so like like you mentioned the, the grim reaper i mean kai i don't know if it'd no. be like i don't know but it was weird that he had mentioned that out of nowhere because i had never heard of that before i've never heard of that one either so. man the hat man that's like that it that's like a thing that our family talks about. Um, some of our family has seen him. They, they call him. Uh, I'm going to load something up on Facebook, and I'm just going to turn it around and show Emerald. But one of my friends wrote a book about the Hat Man, and I, I used to, you know, like when my family she she had it on her website for a long time, and she actually coined the term Hat Man, and the, and the guy has a hat and everything. But, uh, about Heidi? Yeah. Really? And, and she just released a book on it. I want to get her on the show and talk to her about it because... And that's kind of weird that Emerald just brought that up and all of a sudden <laughs> Heidi's coming off this book. That's cool. I mean, she's been coming... She's been writing it for a little while, but I mean, she just came out with it and uh, I'm going to see well, if I can. Well, I wonder if Heidi is uh, listening right now. I don't know. Heidi, are you listening? Why don't you give us a call? She might be at work, but... Oh, uh, I'll tell you what. Heidi, if you're listening, give us a call right now at 559-287-8367. Let's talk about your book really quick. Um, the hat match kind of weird that Emerald just brought that up and all of a sudden... <laughs> oh, shit. I'm looking at... <laughs> It's the hat man. <laughs> and that's, Turn that's it, it. To it. Turn yeah. it. Turn that to her. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Yo, he showed me that same picture. The guy that I was talking to. Are oh, you really? serious? Yeah, he showed me that picture. So that, that's Heidi. Heidi's picture. She drew that of the hat man that, that everybody, for everybody, you know, is calls her and writes her mm-hmm. about this hat man thing and she never really saw it but only she you know everybody she had the, she talks about shadow beings yeah you know and they look like spiders they look like cats they they um they take on different shapes but one of the main shapes is this and he'll come in and he'll choke you out he'll he'll uh get next to you in bed he'll stand over you um he sometimes he has red eyes and I mean, she talks about it in the book, this book. Mm-hmm. And I was telling, I even been promoting it on my Facebook page, like, "Hey, everybody, go buy this book and read it, because you'd be surprised how many families yeah. have seen the Hat Man in their house. I mean, a lot. You know, even when, my you know what? You know what that picture reminds me of? Uh, Poltergeist, the second one, that old man with the hat. Oh yeah, you remember? Yeah. Uh-huh. That reminds me of that. Um, uh, Danny just uh, texted me. Danny Valdrama, mm-hmm. our Squatch Report guy, reporter. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's several years ago, the Reedley, I don't know, it, there was a magazine around here that did a, a, a story on Bigfoot and me. Um, and, and Jolene was the one who uh, did that story. Well, it looked like the Clovis Roundup newspaper is going to pick it up and they're going to run it in the Clovis um, Roundup newspaper. So keep your eyes open for a Bigfoot story. And um, I, I don't know if that's the one that I was involved with or not. I'm pretty sure it is because um, they had to get the uh, okay to use the photographs from the photos from the photographers who took my pictures. So I'm thinking it is. So, anyways, for those who live in the Clovis area, they are. Uh, oh, bummer. 
<laughs> the Roundup newspaper is going to be a, doing a story on Bigfoot, and I think I'm part of that. So keep your eyes open. Just letting you know. So all right. Well, I'm out of chat. Yeah, that was it. The power just pulled out on on the I'm laptop gonna, computer. That stinks. It. I'm not going to redo it again. Uh, it stinks. That stinks. So uh, I don't mind. You nope. need a new computer. We Actually, all I, I, I put a computer. mouse on it. The little the little board was like keeping me from it would keep me from moving around in there and I was getting so frustrated I wouldn't go in chat so I brought this little mouse and then I was in chat and then I wasn't even reading it you know I was so engrossed in what we talk about and I, I should have been looking but I don't you know uh, I have a magazine here that uh, Cheryl gets uh, oh I mean Diane um, so she is a uh, <laughs> she's a school teacher for those who don't know my wife is a school teacher um, and uh, it's called California Educator, and I'm trying to find out the date on this. It is March 2014, just recently. Okay, this is, goes out to the teachers, all the school teachers. Zombies bring STEM education to life. There's actually a story here about zombies for the school teachers and stuff. All right. Well, so, they, they just started a government program. Uh, it's like a training program, how to kill zombies. <laughs> the Pentagon has one, didn't they? Yeah, they just started it. Yeah. Y so. You know, you know, talking about the government, okay, there is this thing and everybody, a lot of, you know, when we would talk about this on the show, some of the things about it, like the Georgia Guidestones and stuff like that, and everybody would say, oh, that's just a government conspiracy or something. I have a nugget for all you people. It's called Agenda 21. You can go on Google, type in Agenda 21 PDF, and a file will come up from the government that it, that it spells out Agenda 21, and it has the Georgia Guidestones in it, how they're going to depopulate, it has chemtrails. It, I mean, it spells out exactly what is going on. And you know what? It's not a conspiracy anymore. It's real. And they're well into this UN plan of Agenda 21. I mean, they're out to kill us. <laughs> you know, I mean, serious. And I found it the other day, and I was shocked, you know, of how mm. far in the plan they already are in. And our government is, like, up to their neck in it. And it makes me mad, you know, that it really does. Um, but everybody go <clears throat> look up Google Agenda 21 PDF. You know, Straight we, from the we've been having a lot of chemtrails lately. And I mean a lot. And, you know, I'll post a photograph. I'll take one with my iPhone and I'll post it on my Facebook wall. And everybody from Sacramento all the way down south from us, they'll take pictures and then Even post New them. New Jersey. I mean, from all over. Well, you know, what's weird, though, is that there's a pilot who is a, uh, a friend on Facebook. He's actually a, a commercial pilot. Mm -hmm. He drives the big planes. And he definitely says, you guys are smoking the crack and you have no yeah. idea what you're talking about. But it's like this, you know. And it's, we'll have, you know, the, the temperature outside will be 100 degrees. All right. And it is beautiful everywhere. Blue sky. Not a single chemtrail or contrail. Not a single one. The following day, there'll be 103. It gets hotter. Then, all of a sudden, now you see contrails all over the place. Chemtrails. Okay, not contrails, but chemtrails. Yeah, now, and, and it's a grid. Actual yeah. squares, like a pattern. Like Now, you know, people weird. are Yeah, people are saying that um, how the chemtrail or contrails develop is because of the colder temperature in the, air. in the air when the fuel or the exhaust of the fuel comes out it freezes and that's what's left but I don't understand when um, you know it, it's hot one day and it's hotter the following day and there's nothing and then all of a sudden you see nothing but chemtrails and all these planes are, 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 are leaving them now I talked with my buddy Mark Gillespie and I think we both have the same theory and a lot of people are saying, how can they have airplanes strictly for chemtrailing? And there's so many of them. I think that they're putting it, whatever it's in, in the fuel. I think it's in the fuel. So they have these tanker trucks on the tarmac on all of these airports, right? And I think what happens is that when they want to spray, 
they'll change out the, the fuel trucks and they'll put fuel in all these passenger airplanes and that's what's leaving the chemtrails, I believe. I don't believe it's planes filled with tanks and that's what it is. Because I, I think it's, I think whatever it is, it's inside the fuel. And I think that's what's leaving these chemtrails. Um, and I think it's, it's all coordinated um, with the, you know, these fuel trucks that are on the tarmac and heading in certain directions and they'll fill up those particular, you know, pair of planes with a certain kind of fuel with the chemical in it. And I think that's what's happening because you'll see hundreds and hundreds of planes leaving these chemtrails. They, they, these planes cannot all be filled with different tanks in the and the seats removed and passed. You know what I'm saying? Tank. This is it, the same ones. It, like 20 of them, and they're going just back and forth. But it's way more than 20. I don't think so. I, I think it's. I think it's in the fuel. I really do. And and that ta- that that it, it's. I can easily accept that um, that you know the, these chemtrails are what they are, and whatever's being left out for us to breathe is in the fuel or the left of the fuel i think because i just don't know if they would have all these planes uh, i i don't know yeah this is, i know what you're you know because there's so there's literally you know thousands and thousands of chemtrails all over the place how can we have that many planes to be doing that i think it's in the fuel i really you know, do. What, you know what gets me is the weather report okay it'll be clear as a bell and it'll say it'll say clear as a bell and then later on in the afternoon, after all these chemtrails are out there, it'll say uh, partly sunny, right? Not partly cloudy. It says partly sunny. You know, it's like, what? You know, keep talking. Like, keep talking. I got something I want to play to everybody. Oh, and everybody will be able to hear it? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, you know, they say, I mean, I, I've kind of researched on these chemtrail things, and they, there is a few studies done where they tested people's blood. And we actually have chemicals in us that that is coming from that sprain. That's what they say. Oh, oh here we go. Hold on, hold on. I need to get it. Yeah. Let me find it. Ah, I mean, I want to get an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you see the new toys for the iPhone, a thermal imager. Team iPhone, man. Man, I can't wait. I, I love actually, my phone. I actually won something on Marlboro that it's like a speaker system, and then you can put the iPhone in it, and then it'll, it'll make it uh, waterproof, like a little speaker system, and then you can float it on the okay. water. Okay, okay. It, it's uh, this is a weatherman. Um, he is on. I'm trying to figure out see what channel he's on. Uh, hold on. Northern California, uh, we've got a bit of an unusual situation. Now, this first portion of the radar cycle, fairly bland and typical, but then you see these bands of very distinct cloud cover moving into the region. That is not rain, that is not snow. Believe it or not, military aircraft flying through the region is dropping chaff. Small bits of aluminum, sometimes it's made of plastic or uh, even uh, metallicized, uh, metallicized paper products, but it's used as an anti-radar issue and obviously they're up there practicing. Now they won't confirm that, but I was in the Marine Corps for many years and I'll tell you right now, that's what it is. Uh, 50 in Medford right now, Bam. 48 in Wairika, 42 in Klamath Falls. Forecast for tonight, clear. So okay, like that, that, that's from a weatherman, guys. All right, he pretty much came out and said what exactly what we've been saying. Now, you know, w- when we say chemtrails, you know, you think that we're talking, um, you know, some type of chemicals to give us cancer or whatever. A lot of it, though, is um, weather, weather uh, modification, uh, you know, all that is what's going on because it's weird that all these tornadoes in, in the Midwest are, they get all of a sudden, there's no clouds at all, you know, cause the clouds should come from the West coast, from Northwest and then go in that direction. But you'll look at the weather maps and they'll see nothing. And then all of a sudden, bam, thunderstorms and all these clouds developed. Like where in the hell did those come from? And all of a sudden you have 20 tornadoes and thunderstorms and flooding. It's like, okay. Um, yeah, that that's exactly what they're doing. They're modifying the the weather. Uh, what, what if, like this is this is what I think, for California. Okay, it's all about the water. I mean, if right yeah. now, if you if you listen, um, the, they're actually fighting over the water about what how much goes down the river. I was even hearing this one uh, YouTube where they were they actually signed a bill 
that the the San Joaquin River was going to be a cold water um, river so that they could have trout and stuff like that. And that means that most of the water coming out of, out of the lake that, you know, the lakes that feed um, the San Joaquin River mm-hmm. would have to use like 75% of their water to go down the river. And we lose it to the fish, okay, and the farmers can't have it. At the same time, they're doing water modification or, or you know, weather modification, and they're drying us out because why? Because why? Because they want us to use GMO seeds, or I mean, somewhere there's some pressure. There, there, there's a correlation there. There's the the reason why we have no water is well, for one thing, Central Valley is the breadbasket of the world. Right. Okay. I mean, everybody is getting. This is where we're, everybody gets their food. Is is us here now? <laughs> Your guys' food's gonna go up. Now it just so happens that our representatives or not mine but you know pelosi <laughs> and uh what's your the other um i don't remember her whatever name in sacramento um <laughs> their husband like either, yeah <laughs> their husbands um are doing de- dealings and 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 with china yeah what's going to happen guys i guarantee you what's going to happen is that you know we're going to lose since we're losing all the water we have no water no snow farmers are going away yeah all right we got to get all this produce from someplace and all the vegetables from someplace. Well, it's going to be coming from China, you guys. I can tell you that right now. And, that, and that's why these our representatives, uh, like, uh, God, I can't for the life of me think of both their names right now and that, because I don't like them. But um, it, it's because, you know, they are more in tune of saving the whatever fish that's up there, right? And they ra- rather save the fish than the farmers. Screw the farmers. Their husbands are are way in so deep that they're in it with the China because they, they want China. They want to buy all the stuff from China because they're getting all this money. I mean, they're, they're, they're millionaires. They're, I mean, they're money-hungry people. Okay? Well, I, think, I actually think they're trying to put the small guy farmers out. And then as soon as they're all gone, then the corporation farmers come in, right? The ones that, that are corporate. Right. And they're going to come in and have these big old giant conglomerate farms and they'll be, in, you know, there won't be like your uncle out there farming 300 acres because they get rid of them. Right. They're, you know, they're going to get rid of them. And actually, they're making the water thing like, uh, I think the fish thing is just only an excuse. No, it's exactly what it is. It's, 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 yeah. and they're using that as an excuse. Exactly yeah. what it is. And, and I actually think when the president came and talked about water, I actually believe it was a closed meeting. They said, I think he told everybody. You know, sciency papers or no rain, and and just to show that, just to show that he meant business, he let it rain a little bit right after he <laughs> left it rain, just a little teeny bit, and then it hasn't rained since. Right. It, I mean, it's been dry as a bone. But back east, how, however, they're like making it um, go over us. I mean, it goes the, the clouds and everything go over us. But only it doesn't drop rain. But then it gets back there, and my sister has been froze out. They're still having frost warnings. And that's in Wisconsin? Or? Yeah. Okay, here's the official trailer for Todd Standing. I'm going to go ahead and play it, just the audio part. Hopefully it'll come up right now. Oh, that was a good idea. Um, I've been able to see for the first time uh, some complete segments of Todd Standing's filming of Sasquatch in another in another area where he's worked on and with him explaining the background which is so important and uh, I'm firmly convinced that he has filmed Sasquatches and that he has what he has portrayed in his documentary are indeed very close portraits in fact of the Sasquatch face because if indeed they are they are clearly some of the most astounding photos of, uh, of Sasquatch in existence that's Jeff Meldrum. With 20 years of tracking and experience I have in the wilderness, there's no way that those structures happen randomly. Mm-hmm. There's no way that you got sight of a Sasquatch in those areas with those tree breaks, with those tracks, getting those apples taken, with those sounds, all these things. The creature was like leaving a breadcrumb trail for him to follow of his noses. And it wanted me to get away from Todd and follow him. Absolutely. And the more I came closer to him, the more noise he came pronounced. I must say that... Uh, sitting and watching these videos in 
contrast to still images, the still images that I was familiar with before we've gotten acquainted here personally, uh, especially that video of the, the, the devil, as you refer to him, the dark-faced uh, individual. Uh, I, I, I can't look at that image and not feel that I'm looking into the eyes of a living creature. Jeff Meldrum. And, uh, and yeah, that's very exciting. That's, as, as I said, it, uh, I've often imagined what it would feel like to actually gaze into the face of a Sasquatch eventually, if I'd ever had that privilege. And uh, I must say that that experience of, of watching that film on the laptop was as close to that experience, I think, as, as I've had. Anybody who comes out in the field with me realizes in a very big hurry that this is the real deal, and that's it. Period. Todd Standing. Real Bigfoot, real deal, pretty exciting stuff. There is a living, breathing, undiscovered primate currently residing in the forests of North America, and I'm excited about its discovery. It's amazing. This is Todd Danning. That's pretty much it. Now they're that, showing. That was supposedly a real growl too. Was it? Yeah, at the end, that he does another clip and where it goes. It's really real. He's out there screaming like a little girl and yeah. waving a flare around. So, um, Jeff Meldon pretty much said on there that uh, what he saw on the laptop computer was basically changed his life. I think changed the way he's thinking as far as science goes. Um, uh, so, um, if so, the, did he look in the eyes of a Bigfoot in there? If the Discovery Channel, if the Discovery Channel gave him two point whatever million dollars for his documentary movie, whatever it is, then then he has something. Yeah. Okay, he has something. Uh, then we need to basically shut up because if they're going to spend that kind of money for whatever he has, then I think, um, but you know what? People are still not going to believe. I, I, I want, I want all these armchair Bigfooters that just only watch YouTube videos and look at people's stuff to come out in the woods with us because I'm going to tell you right now you'll be screaming like a little girl and you won't ever come back in the woods again and you probably won't say anything like you yeah. do in Facebook. Right. You know, when you sit and hide behind your keyboard. Okay, well, that is it for us, guys. Um, I appreciate y'all listening and watching us and listening wherever you may be. We're going to be back next week. Next weekend is our uh, expedition, Bigfoot expedition. Hopefully, we're going to come back with some killer stuff to show you if we come back alive. Yeah, if we're not, um, we might want to. You might see a rerun. Just <laughs> yeah, you I, might see one. I just, doubt it. I doubt it. So, all right, for Jeffrey Gonzalez, Alan Thomas, and Emerald Bonilla, I want to thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good week. Safe. Stay. 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 Stay safe. And I hope you witness something that you cannot explain. Good night, guys. Go squatching. You have been listening to Paranormal Central with Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas, broadcasting worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and on ArtBell.com. Stay tuned for next time. Remember to keep your eyes to the skies, and we hope you witness something you cannot explain.